There is a problem that has troubled philosophers for millennia now. Philosophers like Plato and Socrates have wondered, why is it that programming tutorials aren't making everyone programmers? I know that many of you right now who are watching this know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe you've gone through 100 hours plus of tutorials and yet you still can't build the simplest project or you can't even complete a simple programming challenge. Now there are gonna be some people who are gonna tell you that you just don't have it, right? This it factor, this magic power that if you've been studying this long, you don't get it, just go ahead and quit. Go try something else, right? But I don't believe in it factors. I don't believe in magic powers. If you are stuck learning to code, if you're stuck in that tutorial purgatory, there is a way out. And in this video, I'm gonna lay out some strategies here to get unstuck so you can get back on the path of learning to code so you can get into this as a career. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what exactly is it that's causing you to go through this endless cycle of tutorials without making any progress? Well, it often comes down to this. You're missing the point. Tutorials are an excellent approach to learning how a specific programming syntax works or seeing the examples of how to build certain types of projects. However, the one thing that tutorials can't do is that they can't teach you how to problem solve. Now, if you've heard this before and you're like, Oh, Andy, I've already heard this before. I I'm just gonna stop you right there. This for you should be your white whale. This should be the one thing that you focus on relentlessly. It should not be below you. It should not be too good for this because if you don't figure this out, you will continue to go through this process over and over again where you're not actually learning anything. Now that you've identified this as a weakness, you wanna attack this head on. And the first thing you wanna do is really develop and follow a repeatable process for problem solving. You don't wanna just jump in and start writing code. Now I recommend a four step problem solving process that you're gonna to wanna to write down here. So the first part of any problem solving process is number one, understanding the problem. That means when you're given a programming challenge or a project to build, you want to write out everything to make sure you understand it. I'd say the biggest problem so many of you guys have is that you just leave everything in here, right? So you leave all your thoughts rattling around. If you're like me, you have ADD. It's so overwhelming. So the first thing you wanna do is get everything from here out onto paper or onto a whiteboard. And you wanna just ask yourself questions. You wanna say, what are the inputs of the problem? What are the expected outputs? Are there any rules or constraints? Write down any questions you may have. Get it all out until you, there is nothing else left so that you can see it and you can play around with those ideas. From there, the second step in this process is to break the problem down into small chunks, right? So just like you have a favorite meal that you may like to eat, if you were going to tell somebody else how to make that, you have to break that down into small steps. So if you get some sort of programming challenge where you have to reverse an array, right? Let's say it's a pretty common one. How could you break that down into smaller steps? Don't even think about the code. Don't think about anything else. Just play around with some certain ideas and break that down into the small steps possible so that you can then move into the coding process. Now, the third step in that process is actually to go through each of those steps and convert that into code. So if you've broken things down, you should be able to look at things and say, okay, knowing what I know, that hundreds of hours of tutorials I've put in and knowing the basic syntax, control flow statements, how can I convert this into something that produces the output that I want? And just go through and play with it, right? And then once you've done that, you've written the code, the fourth step is the most important step. You want to execute your code to see if it works. And if it works like you're expecting, great. Pat yourself on the back, go do something else. But if it doesn't, that means you gotta stop and debug and figure out what's going on. Now for many of you, this is gonna be the hardest part of programming. If you've spent all of your time thinking through the problem, breaking it down, writing code, when you execute it and it doesn't work, you're gonna to wanna to like go cry because you've spent all this time. But now is when you put on the hard hat and you have to go in there and figure out why. So you have to really work on your debugging skills, which basically means you have to go through that code line by line as it's running and figure out, okay, where is it not doing what I want it to do? How is it running differently than I think? So many times you're gonna to run to problems and you're gonna realize that you just had a typo or you had a slight misstep in the logic that you've written. So just knowing about this four step process is not enough. You must practice this. So I'm gonna show you a strategy here of how you can practice it to really get better at it. Before I share that strategy though, I'm gonna give you an easy problem to solve as your first practice. So you see if you go down below there, yep, yep, you see that subscribe button? figure out some way to get down there, completely destroy that button. I promise you it will be good first practice. So the first part of the strategy is actually to drop the tutorials for a few weeks and really start on drilling programming problems. The best website I've found for simple no frills coding problems is edibit.com. And as you can see here, it has a clean and simple user interface. And most importantly, you can select very easy coding problems in most of the popular programming languages. You can of course solve the problem, but you can get hints and you can also see other people's solutions as well, which is very helpful. Now, full transparency here, edibit.com does not sponsor my channel. However, I am including an affiliate link in the description below to sign up for their one month free trial. 
If you wanna support the channel, I would recommend going to that link in the description below. Otherwise, just go straight to edbit.com and sign up for their one month free trial. Okay, so now once you've actually signed up for the account, now you're just gonna start drilling. So what I would recommend is doing anywhere from one to two hours a day of just going through problem after problem after problem. Now here is the key. You don't just wanna start diving into these problems. You wanna follow that repeatable process, that four step process that I laid out where you really start with understanding the problem, you break it down to small parts, you write code for each part, and then you test and debug if it doesn't work. Now, as you begin to follow what I've laid out for you here, you're gonna see that your confidence will grow because if you're following this process, this process will give you structure. It will give you something that you can actually work through problems with. You're gonna see that you're actually solving some of these problems and you're gonna start gaining a little bit of momentum. Now, as the weeks go by and you begin to develop confidence in your skills, I do recommend actually getting into project building. So if you've watched this video of mine where I talked about the three levels of projects, I talked about that first level of projects, these simple projects projects, I would actually recommend for you to start getting into. Now, it's really important here that you pick simple projects, things that are not very complicated, because when you go from programming challenges where there's simple inputs and outputs to something like a project, there's more than just syntax. You have to think more outside the box and use your creative skills when it comes to your problem solving, but it's something that you can definitely do. So once you build one or two projects from there, then you can actually go back to tutorials. At this point, you can go to some of the tutorials that you watch and see if those don't make more sense. You can kind of see here, it actually does come full circle where you can actually go back to the tutorials and you can learn way more because you've actually developed problem solving skills. Now, if you're self-taught and you're pursuing your career as a programmer, then I recommend checking out my mentorship program where I've been helping people the last three years really to transition into the field. Now, I'm really only looking for highly motivated individuals, people who are very committed to this career change. But if you are interested, I will drop a link in the description below of how you can do that. Other than that, that's all I've got. Peace out, everybody.